If you're looking to upgrade or replace the SSD in your Steam Deck, look no further. It's easy to do and it should only take about 20 minutes. For this repair, you'll need the following tools. A Philips One driver, a Philips Zero driver, a set of iFixit opening picks, and a pair of tweezers. We also recommend using our fix mat so you stay organized throughout the repair. You'll also need your replacement SSD and a replacement SSD foil cover. See the description box for links to compatible M2 SSD cards in the iFixit store. Before you begin your repair, discharge your Steam Deck to below 25% as a charged lithium-ion battery can be dangerous if accidentally punctured. As an extra precaution, Valve recommends putting your Steam Deck into battery storage mode before starting any repairs. To do this, power down your Steam Deck and then hold the volume up button and then press the power button. Once BIOS mode has started up, use the D-pad to navigate to Setup Utility and the Power menu, and then select Battery Storage Mode and select Yes. Your Steam Deck should power down. One last thing, if you have a micro SD card installed, make sure to remove it before opening the Steam Deck. If you attempt to remove the back cover with it still installed, it could snap right in half. All right, let's get down to business. First up, remove the eight Phillips screws securing the back cover to the Steam Deck. Use an opening pick and slide it into the thin gap between the back cover and the front shell, along the edge of the right grip. If you encounter any difficulty, try starting from the top or bottom edges and then work your way towards the grip. With a little gentle prying, you'll free the back cover from those locking clips. The back cover should lift off. Oh, and one important note, if you have a newer Steam Deck version with a black motherboard cover, skip the next step and proceed directly to the following ones. If your Steam Deck has a silver motherboard cover, use a pair of tweezers to gently remove the piece of foil tape covering a screw. If possible, try not to damage the tape as we might need it later. Next up, remove the three screws securing the board shield. With the board shield out of the way, it's time to disconnect the battery cable. If you can, gently pull it away from the motherboard using the pull tab. If that doesn't work, try using the flat end of your spudger. All right, now the SSD is in the spotlight. Remove the Phillips screw securing it, and the SSD will pop up at a shallow angle. Simply grip the end of the SSD and pull it away from its M2 board connector to remove it. Here's an important step. The SSD is wrapped in ESD shielding, and we'll need to transfer it to the replacement SSD if your new SSD didn't come with it. You can slide it off using a pair of tweezers, but be gentle. Alternatively, if it's stuck, carefully peel it off. We want to keep it in good condition if possible. For reassembly, we're going to reverse the steps we took earlier. If your replacement SSD didn't come with new shielding, wrap the old shield onto the replacement SSD. All right, let's pop the SSD back into its M2 board connector. It should fit nicely and snugly. Then screw it back in place. Now let's reconnect the battery cable to the motherboard. For those with the black motherboard shield, we're skipping this step. But for the rest of you, let's bring that silver shield back into play. Gently lay the fan cable to the side, making sure it's free from any potential tangling. Secure the board shield with the three Phillips screws you removed earlier. Carefully align the long edges of the back cover with the device and press down gently on the back cover to engage those locking clips. Grab your Phillips screwdriver and tighten up the eight screws that hold the back cover in place. Remember to find the perfect fit for each one. The innermost four screws are shorter than the outer screws. Now that you have your fancy new SSD installed, you'll need to install an operating system on it. Head on over to the SteamOS download page and download the image file directly from Valve's website. We need a piece of software called Rufus to create a bootable drive. There are alternatives, pick your favorite. You'll also need a USB-A to USB-C dongle or a USB-C compatible USB stick with at least eight gigabytes of available storage. First up, insert your USB stick into your computer and open up Rufus. At the top under device, you should see your USB stick. If not, select it from the drop-down list. Fair warning, we're about to erase everything on the drive. Make sure you've selected the correct device to format. Under boot selection, we're going to pick disk or ISO image from the drop-down menu, and we'll go ahead and click on the select button right next to it. Navigate to where you downloaded your SteamOS image and select it, and then click open in the bottom right. You'll find yourself back on the Rufus application. The partition scheme should be set to GPT, and you'll see all the remaining options are grayed out. So long as the file system says FAT32, you should be good to go. Once you've checked all those settings, double triple check that the drive you're about to format is the correct one and hit start. Click OK on the next prompt and sit back while the image is written to the drive. Once it's done, remember to eject your USB drive before unplugging it from your computer. 
Next up, we're going to plug in the newly imaged USB stick into our Steam Deck and power it on. Hit the A button on the next prompt, go over to Boot Manager and select the external drive. Wait a few minutes and you should see a desktop with four shortcuts. Navigate over to the Reimage Steam Deck shortcut, accept the following prompts, and wait for the installation to complete. Once the install is complete, go ahead and reboot the system when prompted. At this point, it's safe to disconnect the USB drive from your Steam Deck. That's it, you've done it! Your Steam Deck is now reassembled and ready to take on the gaming world once again.